Hi, it's Anne, and thank you for stopping by. I have something useful that I need to make, and I thought you might enjoy coming along. Um, I've talked so much about the nonprofit I'm involved with, where we do lots of volunteer um, uh, volunteer activities uh, uh, to help out uh, some of our older neighbors, but we also have a lot of social events. I'm not in charge of any of the social committees um, uh, or the, the social events, but I am uh, helping to support the woman who is. And so I'm in a fair amount of meetings about these different um, activities that we have. Well, they're not all social. One is a fundraiser. One is our annual member business meeting. But anyway, we have um, teams that we're forming to help uh, pull off all of these various events that everybody enjoys. And I find I am in so many different meetings or somebody will mention, oh, Jane wants to volunteer for the uh, the ice cream social, but she knows of a magician that might be interested in appearing at the volunteer appreciation event. I mean, there's just, you know, lots of this going on. I will take notes. I need a place so those things don't just stay in my notes. I need a place to record them. Uh, in a folder that is associated with each uh, various events. So when I meet with a woman who is in charge of these things, I can open it up and say, oh, by the way, you know, we're, we're planning the, the ice cream social. Here's some, you know, here's somebody who's interested in volunteering or here's the name of a vendor. It's, it, you know, so many ideas come, you know, some come in email, somebody hears something, somebody might text me or there might be, you know, just a blah, blah, blah at the book club. You know, it's that kind of thing. So anyway, I need, I need a folder that has pockets for each event. Happily, there are eight events here, and I can make pockets for each event if I use only two pieces of uh, rather heavy uh, heavy paper or lightweight cardstock and put some, you know, this will give me eight pages out of these two sheets. I'll put pockets on and I'll have a little folder. So anyway, if you have any event that you, uh, uh, events or projects that you like to manage, Something like this might be useful for you too. I am going to use, um, as we often do, a brown mailing envelope that came in the mail. This, is, this wasn't Amazon, this was my new Fitbit that came. But you don't see me wearing here because I haven't actually <laughs> I haven't actually taken it out of the box yet. I should have before I went to the gym today. I just keep forgetting about it. I'm using the packaging before I'm using the device itself, but isn't that the way it goes in junk journal world? So I'm just kind of opening this on the side because this is gonna be the size that I think that will uh, allow me to, um, just to fold these standard letter size sheets and uh, make a reasonable little folio. This back side, I think I kind of ruined that. It has some kind of crumbly stuff uh, from the, the inside of this padded envelope, so I may not be able to save that. But this I'm just kind of trying to pry open and see how this might work as the cover for this thing. Now, what does this look like? Yeah, I, 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 I like having this kind of crinkliness. I think, oh, I think I'm gonna take my chances and cut there. and hope that I don't open up any of that flaky stuff, but we'll see. If I do, we'll find some way around it, won't we? Other than just knowing I want to have these eight simple pages with pockets, I don't have a lot of plans for this. It actually just occurred to me, I was doing some work in my office getting some volunteers organized for uh, for one of the events uh, coming up next month. And I thought, oh, I need, I need a folder. I can't have all these little pieces of paper all over my desk. I need a folder. And yeah, this is the one that doesn't have that rip in it. I think I might try to pry this label off of here too. I'm not going to get all of it off. I'm going to be covering it, but it might be nice to have a little less of this, one less thickness. Oh, I'm getting perilously close. I 
rest of that, the inner workings of, of this padding here. I don't know if you can kind of see that, uh, that white stuff that's showing through. Those are those little clumps of the cushions. I am grateful to them that they hopefully kept my Fitbit safe when it was on its way to me, but I don't need them for this next iteration. I'm always inspired by Gail doing um, notebooks and, and journals like this because she makes such wonderful use out of, uh, out of shipping envelopes. And let's just kind of see how we can There we go, good. It looks like this remains intact. And if I fold this, will I be able to get these guys inside? Let's fold them and see how they're gonna do size-wise. These are, had these in my stash for ages. These are some fairly lightweight cardstock that I coffee dyed some time ago. And they're a little heavy for regular journal pages, but for this, since I just really want a storage place for all of my notes, and probably something I can use again next year, I did want them to have some heft to them. Isn't it amazing we only have two sheets of paper and we're gonna be able to have eight pages. There, that's that wonderful times four formula. How's this gonna fit in here? Yeah, I think that's gonna be okay. I might trim a little off the bottom if I dare. Yeah. Yep, I think I'm gonna trim a little off the bottom. See if I can dodge the dodge the little cushions. going to be a whole lot of decorating on this one. I'll probably do a little because, you know, you go to a meeting, you know, you want to have your stuff be cute. Yep, that's going to be, that's going to be just fine. Now, do I want to cover this? I could almost just leave it like that, couldn't I? I could cover it with something to give it a little more protection. I had this piece of Mamagami paper that I <clears throat> got after I saw, or made after I saw Gail, once again Gail, uh, using this, but I think that the current craze for Mamagami started with Ava, so thank you Ava for inspiring us to, I, I have crumpled paper before and smoothed it out, but I haven't gone to the level with the hand lotion and all of that stuff that, um, uh, that Ava advised us to do. So that, you know, even though this is brown on brown, I think I'm feeling okay with that. I think I'd like to go ahead and put this piece, this is a, it's a grocery bag. So let's, yeah, let's just do it. Let's just do this. Um, do I have any kind of a underlay here? I think um, I almost could use this, couldn't I? I'll just use this for now, and then I'll probably use this paper for some of the pockets I want to make. I'm gonna get out the Mod Podge. I haven't had that out for a while. Let's, I always store it with plastic under the lid because it, it's such a good adhesive. It can seal itself shut. And I have a little sponge brush that I like to use for Mod Podge. Oof, 
take out that, take off the, the lid and those fumes begin to, begin to hit you. And I think the reason I'm using Mod Podge is it's just a, a nice all over wet glue and then I can put a little, a little layer on top as well to give it a nice sort of a, sort of a slick, sort of a sturdy, sort of a polished kind of finish. Mod Podge is good in thin layers. And when I put it on with a with a sponge, I usually squish the sponge down a little bit and get some that has been absorbed on the surface. I think some people are nervous about using things like non Mod Podge because they think it's going to be super messy. But you can see, I mean, I'm just doing this on my regular desk. I've got a little bit of an underlay to protect my my surface, but I don't need, need anything too big. All right, I'm gonna move fairly quickly. There are some, this is gonna be the front part here, and there are gonna be some holes that I created in the squishing, and there's some tearing, but that happens. I'm gonna find a way to patch over the holes, or just leave them. I'll put a link to Ava's webs or uh, her channel where you can learn more about making this paper like this. I've used a lot of a lot of grocery bags over recent years. And you know when we were all on lockdown when we used to do curbside pickup of curbside pickup of our groceries. Things were, you know, were in in brown bags, and we had a really big supply of them. But you know, now obviously the last few years we've been going back to the grocery store ourselves. Well, truth be told, at my house, Dan is the one who does the majority of the grocery shopping because I just I don't. I go sometimes, but it's just not fun shopping for me. Uh, so we, you know, we take our uh, take our own reusable bags. I think I'm going to. This isn't adhering quite as well as I want, but I'm not going to worry about it too much. I'm going to trim some of the excess off. Pause the video when I'm letting this dry. And I will, if it's not adhering good, I will, uh, or adhering well, pardon me, if it's not adhering properly, I will uh, I'll probably sew around the edges. So I'm not too worried about it. If it doesn't give me a nice, a nice stick. I'm going to add my Mod Podge on the cover here. Don't gasp when you see me just pouring it on there. I just didn't want to be reaching in front of you continually. And it may not get to every little, every little surface. There's going to be a little variation. We'll just see how it turns out. In any case, I'm certain it's gonna be something that I can certainly use for this event planning purpose. I do enjoy being involved in this organization for the fun events that they uh, put on because they're you know, they're so great about getting you know getting people out of the house and enjoying fellowship and you know there's there's many many events you know that go on like every week you could do something every day of the week if you wanted to there's book clubs and a french club and brunches and coffee meetups and 
pizza lunches once a month and hikes and bicycle rides and all kinds of things like that. But um, those are kind of smaller, maybe a little more neighborhood uh, focused. These events that I'm uh, with that list that I showed you are, are really more for they're sort of all member events and draw people all from our our larger neighborhood, which is here on the east side of Portland. Okay, I am afraid I might have gotten a little too much Mod Podge on this, um, but we'll see. I'm going to just kind of get the top part out and, um, and we'll dry it and see, um, see if it's going to turn into a journal cover or a folio cover for us. See you after it dries. Okay, let's see how this little planning folder um, is working for us. I think I'm okay with this. It, um, uh, it dried nicely, and the nice thing about it is that when I put that Mod Podge on the top, it darkened the, the tips of the little folded uh, parts. And normally when I do my crumpled up grocery bag uh, to make it sort of, give it sort of a faux leather look, and I've done videos about this before, I put a little bit of ink on top to give it that color variation. This one, because there was lotion, you know, I applied lotion to the fa uh, to the, to the paper to scrunch it up uh, and did so repeatedly. Something, uh, something changed the chemistry of that paper surface and uh, the Mod Podge brought out the darkness. So anyway, that was easy. The thing I don't care for, maybe you can see here, my light isn't very good, but where the Mod Podge sort of pooled around those nooks and crannies, it's, you know, it's dry now, but you still see a little bit of that foaminess. So I'm not crazy about that, but um, honestly, for a little utility folder made out of a grocery bag and a, and a, a mailing envelope, um, I think this is fine. I turn, um, folded it in half. I put a couple of eyelets in there and some uh, twine. And then we're going to put the insides on. I did a little bit of collaging here just to kind of cover up the uh, the inside of that uh, where the package um, packaging is showing. But I didn't bother to do the bottom part because I'm going to put some pockets on. And I machine stitched uh, around the edge in that kind of rusty color. So it is nice. It is nice and sturdy. This is going to last. This is going to last a long time. So um, anyway, so while I am designing it for uh, notes for this coming year's activities, I'm going to be able to, you know, paste some of these labels, paste fresh ones on top and use it for other things in the years ahead. Anyway, let's get started with the inside. Uh, I know I want to have pockets front and back, and I took a bunch of leftover grocery bags, and I just made a bunch of pockets. Um, so, and I stitched along the edge and I, I, I just chain stitched. So I'm going to have to clip them apart here, but that's okay. I just changed my decorative stitching in between, in between, and it, it, it keeps them together. So let's do this first one here. And I think, um, I think I'm going to want to put gussets on this one because I want to put a, uh, a calendar. If I can fit a little calendar inside here, I think I'm going to do, um, I'm going to do that. Um, but let's get started with this part first. It is the next day, by the way, I let this, uh, I let this dry overnight. Mod Podge dries to the touch in fairly short order, but I like to get it nice and thoroughly, thoroughly dry before I try to manipulate it and fold it too much. Plus, I wasn't in a rush. I'm doing this on Super Bowl weekend, and of course, all of the excitement uh, is... When, when is Taylor Swift going to get to Las Vegas to get to the game to see her boyfriend? I'm really not a football fan. I really don't even know much about pop music, although my nieces uh, have me interested in uh, uh, in Taylor Swift. So I've been kind of following that excitement a little bit. What I get a kick out of is 
is my sweet husband. He can't, he, he is a big football fan. He claims to have no interest in pop music whatsoever. Um, but, uh, he always seems to know where Taylor Swift is and um, where, where, when she's going to go, wherever she's going to go. So I'm just getting a kick out of, uh, out of him sort of turning into a Swifty. All right, so what I'm doing with these gussets is I'm taking the inside of this pocket and I'm just putting these little pieces of folded paper here. What happened to my glue? Oh, it fell down over here. And these just kind of create a little extra give. So you can stuff a little bit more into some of these pockets. This pocket on the fr inside front cover, I'm only, it's really the only one that's gonna need a whole lot of extra stuff on it. But to make the gussets, I just fold a, a, a narrow strip of paper. It could be narrower than this glue it to the edge with the fold of, of that strip along the edge of the pocket. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. It's amazing how much more pliable and much more um, expandable a flat pocket can become when you add a gusset. I think of the word gusset as being such an old-fashioned kind of word. I think of it with regard to dressmaking. Uh, and for some reason, it makes me think of my mother talking about my father's mother, my mother's mother-in-law, uh, that she had a, in her older years. And I... I, I barely remember this grandmother. She died when I was, um, I was very, very young. So she really wasn't part of my growing up experience. But um, I remember my mom talking about how grandma uh, would, um, uh, had a dressmaker and as she got more stout in her later years, the dressmaker would put gussets in the side, uh, the seams of her, um, uh, of her dresses, and so I always think of gussets as something that a discreet uh, lady would um, would have if she wanted some expandable, something expandable. And that's how I can remember what a gusset is. So this, I'm gonna go inside my front cover. And I think I'm gonna use my Fabri-Tac here because I want that really nice and strong here. And just put, put the glue all the way on the gusset there. And as you can see, the fold is towards the edge. So that's gonna give us pocket space edge to edge. There we go. I think that that Fabrifix is, uh, is a good choice here because I'm getting the edges of this pocket and the underside of the gusset on some of this overlap area where I turned the Mod Podge paper surface to the inside, if that makes sense. Good, I don't wanna test that pocket quite yet. Let's set this aside and let's go to our actual pages. This is all we have to be stitching in. This is and this this is pretty thick. This is much thicker than I would put in a regular journal. But everything we're going to want to put in here um, is all about the pockets. So I'm just going to start. I'm going to clip apart my grocery paper that I have put the decorative stitching in. I'm going to make some pockets side tucks and some of them more traditional pockets. And I just did a whole bunch. And 
I left just a little bit of that there because I liked it. I think for these, I think I can just use my art glitter glue. I did a little bit of fold over on the top just to make the make the pocket a little more sturdy. Although this whole folder is going to be nothing if not sturdy. I think in the interest of time, because you don't need to see me doing the same thing over and over again, um, I think I'm going to show you what I want to do with uh, with these. This will be the first page of, uh, of the signature, and I want to label each pocket because my idea is to keep notes and ideas and contacts and such uh, here. And this is the first event that's coming up. I, I just printed out the names of all these different events and the date um, um, on my printer and cut it apart. And, and because I wanted it to be cute, I did coffee dye the paper and ink it a little bit. Absolutely not necessary. But if I'm using these in meetings or I'm digging through to find notes, um, I want it to have that junk journal style. There we go. I'm going to go through each of these pages and uh, put on a pocket and label each one with, um, with an event. So I'll be back when I finish that. Okay, I've gotten the pockets in place and each one is labeled with where I want to keep the notes from each activity. Uh, and I, I, I remind myself, these, you know, these don't have to be enormous pockets. I'm, I'm not in charge of these. I'm not keeping the entire <laughs> repository of information uh, uh, on, on each event. There are spreadsheets. There are mailing lists. There are, uh, there, there's a, a lot more files on each of these. But this is just where I'm going to capture the little ideas that come along. And more importantly, the people that tell me that they're interested in helping uh, with these different things. I want to make a note of them, get them assigned to the right to event, and get back to them so that they can do their wonderful volunteer work in making these events happen. So I am just going to very easily put these pages in, all two of them. Oh, however shall I manage? Uh, but I'm going to use my Tim Holtz ruler. I usually start with this when I do the pamphlet stitch. You've seen plenty of people do pamphlet stitch over the years, so I'm going to make this make fairly short work out of this. But I always start with this ruler. And then I use my poker and pierce there. Throw on that fold. And this one here. Now I'm going to go to my folder. And I am similarly going to find the center, which is a little bit different than the pages because it's slightly larger. And I'm going to mark the center. And then I'm going to go three inches this way and three inches that way. I'm going to poke here too. This might be a little bit tougher. No, oh, not really. This paper is fairly crisp now. Okay, in we go. I have my needle threaded with my waxed thread. I'm going to get the papers positioned in the middle. lined up. Is everything in order here? Yes, it is. So I'm going to take a binder clip and clip on this side and clip on this side just to get those creases embedded nicely together. stitch down and we're going to catch it here and in from the 
this side and up through the pages. <laughs> I tied these little bits of twine on through the eyelets uh, and they're, they're wanting to play. They're wanting to tangle with the others. Okay, draw that nice and taut. Jump all the way to the top. And come out. This is so easy with just these two pages. This is the smallest signature you will ever make. And come back out on the other side. Yep, that's going to be nice and taut. Set my needle aside. And simply tie. Yeah, I'm ready to put this folder to work already because we're already starting to have meetings about some of the some of the events that are coming up fairly soon. And uh, I probably, if I'm in a meeting and I take notes, I usually take notes like on a larger legal pad or something. But then if there are notes I want to keep, I, f I can fold those up and stick them in here. Oh, this feels so good to have all of this uh, together. Um, I'm not certain if this calendar, this, you know, little pocket calendar is going to fit in here or not. But let's see. It's kind of stressing that. I just think, I think it's, even with that gusset, I think it might, this this planner might be just a little too thick. I might have to cut that down or do a printout or something, but it's handy to have a calendar along. Um, okay, let's tie this shut. <laughs> These pages are so thick, but it is, it is going to... It is going to be fine, you know, thrown in the bottom of a box of supplies at the rummage sale or thrown into a basket with potluck things taken. Uh, because as each of these events happens, I'll take this along because there will be people at this event that will say, oh, this is so nice. I would like to volunteer to help uh, for the next one. What is it? And I'll have my folder right here. So I'll be able to let them um, let them know. Okay, the thing with decorating the front, and I, you know, for something utility like this, I don't have to decorate the front, but of course I'm going to decorate the front. It, this is bumpy, and so the glue is going to, you know, there's... The glue is going to only catch on the things that are really forward facing. And so I don't want something that has just a small surface area. I want a big flat surface area to maximize uh, the amount of catching uh, that, that it will do. And um, since one of the events we're going to have uh, is going to involve a bingo game, I thought, gee, I wish I had a bingo card. That would be fun to put on here. I don't have a bingo card, but in looking through my old ephemera, I did have um, some of these little game cards from something called Lotto. And um, it is not bingo, but I sprayed a little bit of coffee on it, and I thought that might look cute on here. Uh I also looked through in my ephemera, I thought this might be really pretty. But there's a lot of kind of small areas here. I was just afraid it might not glue down properly. So I'm going to say no to the poppy, which is something I cut off of a, a greeting card. Then I had this little owl. And you know, who doesn't love an owl? I mean, you've heard me say that a dozen times before. And there's so much wisdom uh, in this group of, uh, of people. So I thought, you know what, we're going to put the owl there. And I had this little, um, I looked through some of my books for some uh, text to capture for a, uh, for a label, and I found dates to remember. And I thought, that's it, we're going to keep it nice and simple. And uh, if it's sitting around at, at a desk on a meeting, people will go, oh, dates to remember. Yes, that's good. Um, so let's go ahead and glue this down, and uh, we will get it glued in place. I think I'm going to use my glue stick for the wise old owl. Yeah, I I have this box sitting on, on a shelf over here by my desk, and I have not used those game cards for anything. I think I, I, think I sent a bunch to Connie. Um, I'm not certain she knew what to do with them either. They're kind of thick, so they're actually going to be, this one is going to be actually perfect for a, uh, for a little journal placard, or a little cover placard. So I want to get this guy. The aspect ratio is perfect. 
with this owl. So let's get him fairly well centered here. Or maybe I'll, maybe I'll pull him just slightly to one side because I'm going to have this label here. There we go. He looks like he's ready for some fun. And yeah, I'll put this just slightly askew. I'm trying to remember we don't have to center everything. This was must have been something I put on a, on a brown craft envelope. I think I cut it out of that. Those are kind of envelopey bits and pieces there. There we go. And I'm just gonna put this down with my art glitter glue. it that way. I think this is going to be a super useful little little thing and um, all of the notes that I can put into those pockets I am likely to be taking that paper out of this this little caddy. Remember we made this a few weeks ago? I made three of these. I have them on almost every, well, in several rooms in the house. Use it, use it, use it. This is where the scrap paper goes uh, when it presents itself. Love this. Anyway, stuff paper can come out of here to go into here. Uh, another thing I can put into these pockets are these little scrap pads. Um, because these are just scratch paper. This is perfect for writing somebody's phone number down, writing down, uh, you know, Sheila can bring chicken casserole or, you know, uh, uh, Jane knows a magician for the, for the party or something like that. I don't know if Jane really does know a magician. We'd like to find a magician. Um, these can go into some of those little pockets for some of those little quick notes too. But for now, let's go ahead and just get this started. Now this is going to be a little bit, with all the bumpetiness here, this is going to be a little dicey. Well, not dicey, but I think I, I want to make this as flat as possible for the gluing process. And I think I'm going to glue it here and then I'm going to take it over um, and find my really my really, really heavy book to put on top, which I don't have here at my desk right now, but little strands from Fabrifix. And I think this is gonna do the job, but I just am gonna be pretty generous in how I apply the Fabrifix. Yeah, I'm not crazy about how that Mod Podge pooled in sort of a foamy way there, but if anybody notices it and judges me harshly because of it, um, well, I just don't think that's going to happen. So worrying about that is not something I'm going to invest any energy into. All right, there's a whole lot of Fabrifix. And let's get this little wise owl reminding us of these fun dates where people are going to be getting together, enjoying some games, enjoying a lot of food, enjoying music, raising funds at the rummage sale, doing some community service work for Earth Day. We have so many, so many fun things that we're going to be doing with this group. And as I'm helping to support the, the woman who does organize all of these, because she's the one with all the great ideas um, uh, for how to make a party fun. Um, I can keep track of what volunteers are doing what and what some of the details are. I think we're done, friends. Look at that thick, thick, very sturdy, um, uh, pockets here, but lots of notes are going to go into this right away. I'm going to 
tie this shut, I'm gonna go put it under a heavy book. Hope it doesn't fall off while I'm tying it. No, it won't. It's starting to grab, I think. Okay, under a book this is gonna go until, probably until, you know, tomorrow or next day. Then I'm gonna start stuffing those pockets because these committees are already at work on these events. It's gonna be fun. Thanks a lot, guys. Talk to you soon.